Okay, so if you like playing games where you could put the odds in your favor, well, this might be the perfect little math question for you. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the question. It is the following. Will your chances of getting tails on a coin toss, i.e. heads and tails, improve if you play the game more times? All right, we need to uh, go ahead and make an assumption here that our coin is perfectly fair. In other words, there's no trickery. And here is our tails and here is our heads. And again, the question is, will our chances improve of getting tails if we toss this coin more time, i.e. we play the game more times? Now, the answer to this question is either yes or no. So it might seem like it's kind of a boring math question, but really there is a bigger, deeper thing going on here in terms of the mathematics and uh, has direct implications on this question, okay? But uh, anyways, if you know how to answer this question, if you think you know what I'm going to talk, be talking about, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and then we're going to have an interesting discussion on a topic, a math topic, that has a lot of relevance that I think a lot of people are really not aware of. And this is not that difficult uh, to understand as well. But uh, anyways, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. And the answer is no. Okay, so let's just make sure we <laughs> don't forget the question. Will your chances of getting tails on a coin toss improve if we play the game more time? So the answer is no, right? So here is our coin. We have tails and we have heads. What is our chances of getting uh, tails on a coin toss, right? So everything is, this thing's flipping up in the air. So we have a one out of two chance or 50% chance of getting tails. I think everyone pretty much sees that, right? Now, uh, after we play this game, whatever the results are, we're going to play another game, right? Let's see if our chances uh, improve. So here is our another, um, you know, uh, try at getting tails. Now, here is the thing, okay? If we had a, a one out of two chance of getting tails on, on this first try, what's our chances of getting tails on our second try? Well, it's one out of two as well because these are what we call independent events. This event has nothing to do with this event, okay? Now, I think most people, even if they weren't thinking of it in terms of those exact uh, uh, terms, probably um, answered, you know what, uh, no, uh, you're not going to really improve your chances uh, if you play uh, more. Okay, so I'm going to do something unusual for my videos, and I'm going to uh, just assume that all of you out there got this right. So everybody gets a happy, pay, happy face, an A+, plus, and a 100%. But there is a more important uh, topic here that I want to talk about, all right? And this is going to be highly relevant to this question. You'll see exactly what I'm going to be talking about in just one second. Okay, so uh, here is the question. Again, we're reading it. We're like, all right, what's going on here? It's a pretty simple yes or no question. But, you know, even if you said no, our chances will not get better if we play this game more frequently, okay? But how can we back this up? Or in other words, or how can we uh, kind of look deeper into this question? In other words, what other things might be influencing our chances of getting heads or tails in this type of situation, especially if we want to play the game more times. Like what happens? Well, this is a very, very important concept in mathematics and in probability. And we're gonna be talking about something called theoretical and experimental probability, okay? Now this sounds kind of scary. This is not that scary. And um, this is highly relevant to this question. All right, so uh, let's first make sure you understand what probability is in a real basic sense here. So simple probability can be defined as the following. The, probabil the probability of an event uh, occurring is the number of ways, let me fix that right there, number of ways an event can occur divided by the total possible outcomes, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So here, the probability of getting uh, tails and on a uh, 
coin toss. We have ta uh, tails here, heads here. So what's the probability of getting tails? Well, how many ways can we get tails? Well, there's only one way. That's if the coin lands on the ground with tails are up. So there's one way to, that can happen. Okay, but what's the total possible outcomes? Well, you can get tails only one way, but you could get tails or heads. That's the number of possible outcomes. So we have a one out of two chance. And of course, one over two, uh, that fraction is equivalent to the decimal 0.5, which is equivalent to the percentage 50%. So we have a 50% chance of getting tails. But we need to understand this, okay, the definition of uh, simple probability in order to understand experimental and um, theoretical probability. So this is where this video, I think, is going to get very interesting. So let's go and take the next step, which, of course, is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I wouldn't ask if it wasn't that important. Uh, this is very important for uh, my channel to grow. OK, so if you want to show your support for my channel, this is the best way to do it. And if you're going to subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell as well. But uh, basically, my goal is to reach as many people as possible that are interested in math, but particularly those people that are struggling in mathematics. And if you're struggling in math, please do not give up. OK, uh, let me just tell you very quickly, there are no shortcuts. Uh, what you need is to really work as hard as you possibly can, but you got to get the right instruction. OK, find a teacher that can teach you in a way you like and understand and doesn't water things down. Tutorials are not going to be enough. You need full instruction. By the way, if you need help at any level of mathematics, check out my main math courses. You'll find links to all those in the description. So let's get back to this problem. Okay, so theoretical versus experimental probability. Now, I haven't even defined this uh, yet, but I'm going to define it right now. Okay, so what's theoretical probability? Well, theoretical probability is what I just did. Okay, in other words, I just um, found the probability of getting tails is the number of ways I can get tails, which is one, and what's the total possible outcome? Uh, two, right? I get heads or tails. So this I, uh, comes down to 50% chance. This is what I expect to happen. Okay, or more or less, you know, by theory, okay, I expect that I'm going to, you know, uh, every uh, other game, okay, or half the time, I should get tails if I'm going to play this game, right? So pretty much all of us would have that reasonable expectation. But what is this right here? Experimental probability. Well, this is our reality check. <laughs> In other words, this is the way things actually uh, can occur, okay, which may not match up to what we expect. Let's go ahead and take a look at a simple example. All right, let's suppose we... Uh, play this coin toss game. Let's say we're going to play this 10 times. And the results could look like this. So the first time uh, someone gets heads, and then you get heads, and you get heads, and then, oh, you get tails, heads, tails, heads, 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 tails. Okay. So let's say this was the result on this experiment. In other words, we, you know, it was a fair coin. All right. And there was no trickery. We're not trying to bias the situation. We're just throwing things up and letting things kind of happen. But if you can see here, we only got tails three out of the 10 times. So, you know, if we did, let's suppose we didn't know what the theoretical probability was. Let's say we had no idea. We're like, hey, let's determine how often we may get tails if we do a coin toss. Well, here uh, looks like we're only going to get a 30% chance of getting tails based upon this uh, 10 trial experiment. Now, that is clearly, you know, far from this 50% chance. So what's going on here? Is our math broken or maybe our experiments messed up? Well, nothing's going on here other than uh, an understanding of the difference between theoretical probability and experimental probability. But this is going to get a lot more interesting right now. Okay, so here is kind of the big idea of this video. Okay, so we have theoretical probability. We already discussed it for the chances of getting uh, tails on a coin toss. We got about a 50% chance, right? One out of two chance. But we just played this game. Or we just, I'm sorry, we just played this experiment. It was 10 trials, okay? And we ended up with 30% of the times uh, getting uh, tails. So what's going on here? Well, this is, this is where you have to now ask yourself, okay? Now, before I tell you the answer, what happens if we continue our lovely little experiment here, okay? And so instead of 10 trials, let's say we continue it on, all right? We continue it on and we play this game 10,000 more times. What do you think is going to happen to the results? Do you think that we'll continue 
to get tails about 30% of the time? Well, uh, actually, before I answer that, put what you think, just intuitively speaking, into the comment section. Okay, what would make sense? Okay, well, if you're uh, saying, well, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm thinking that, you know, if we play the game, uh, you know, a lot more times, I think I will actually start, you know, winning more often. Okay, and that's exactly what's going to occur. Now, if we play this game, you know, in a, uh, with very large numbers, okay, the large number of times, about 5,000 of those times we're going to get tails and about 5,000 we will get heads, okay? So what's going to happen is this. If we increase our experiment size, right, the number of times we run a trial, uh, what we expect is going to happen actually will start panning out, okay? Now, hopefully that makes sense to you, but let me tell you what this is all about, okay? What I'm demonstrating here is this concept called the law of large numbers. This is extremely important in probability and statistics, the law of large numbers. And this is what this thing is about. Uh, some of you might have heard this before. You'll certainly um, see this in you know, various kind of, um, you know, I've seen it on various news articles and things like that, or just, you know, people will use this term, you know, you'll see it, you'll run into it every so often. So when you see law of large numbers, what does this mean? Well, it means exactly this, okay? If you run this experiment more and more and more times, okay, it's going to get, it's the, it, the results are going to get closer to what you expect. So how does that impact, um, you know, our, our situation here, right? Let's suppose you were like, okay, you know, uh, you know, I bet you, you know, a dollar or whatever, you know, you, let's say you're trying to you know, predict, you know, your chances of winning or something like that. You know, you may not want to, um, you know, just uh, have a small number of trials because we all know playing these different games, you're like, you get frustrated, like, boy, we just played, I, lo I lost, I lost, I lost, oh, I won, I lost, I lost. I'm like, how are you winning? I should have a 50% chance. Everybody understands what I'm talking about here. Well, you can't really go into a game of chance, okay, and expect that your theoretical probability is going to work out if you're only going to play the game a few times, all right? So this, again, is the difference between experimental and theoretical probability, right? And uh, hopefully, this is like intriguing to some of you. are like, oh, okay, you know, this makes sense. And even if you didn't know what these terms were, and probably a lot of you, just through common sense and logic, can be like, yeah, you know, I get this. But uh, if you want to continue to study probability and statistics, this is definitely a concept that comes up big time. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.